Hello YouTube, welcome back to episode 3 of the Easy LiDAR Harming Script tutorial. Um, since we are at uh, 3 out of 5 that I intend to make in these little series here, I want to do a quick recap. The simple one, launching ship. Now what was required again? That is your cameras at the front, which is uh, R underscore LiDAR. R underscore LiDAR, and make sure they're close together. An optional sound block is not required, it's optional. Uh, if you do it, it's named R underscore alert, and when your missile walks on, it'll play the sound however you set it up. You can change the sound length, you can change which uh, one it plays, there's different alerts, whatever. If you have a mod for it, you can change it to that. And obviously, your merch blocks. That's so they could, uh, you know, mount onto something. And then, naturally, your cockpit or your remote control, however you're going to fly it. Missile requirements. Programmable block, gyroscope, power, thrusters, remote control, cameras. Once again, your mounting point and your warheads. Back of a missile. Well, I don't don't have it on this one. You need your remote control, right? Just like a remote controlled ship. You need your programmable block for the script. You need your gyroscope. You need your batteries or hydrogen if you want to use hydrogen, but you'll still need a battery. You need your thrusters, obviously, for it to fly. Um, if you're making a kinetic missile, you don't need warheads. But if you're not, you put some warheads on there, and then cameras. Now on this one, you do not change the name of the cameras to R underscore LiDAR as you do with the ship. It'll screw everything up. However, you name them proximity, strictly proximity, nothing else. That way they act as proximity fuses. And then if you wish, you can change your proximity uh, settings, like the distance they detonate, your dead man switch range, so if they get further than 10 meters, they'll detonate in this case. On uh, your fail safe, which is basically if the camera is destroyed, it automatically arms the warhead. So if it hits your target, they'll still detonate. And then this little line down here, which I'll show you, remember, you put it in your uh, custom data. It's not in this one, but you'll put it in your custom data of your programmable block. That is to make sure the missile knows which way is forward. And the missile underscore remote will be whatever you name your remote control. Now that is not necessary if you got more forward facing thrust than you do upward facing thrust. So like if I were to throw this on here, it will not be necessary. I got more forward facing thrust than I do upward facing thrust. If you only got two, I would put it on. Now um, the launch modes was, where's it at? Uh, I don't have it on here. Mode zero is your fire and forget mode. And mode six was your standard unguided rockets. Uh, mode three and mode five use your uh, turrets to guide and aim on. Mode three was the TV guided mode where you yourself controlled the turret. Mode five was with an AI controlled turret and a missile followed the AI controlled turret. And then it depends on there what you name it, R forward or R designator. And now we'll get over into GPS mode. Now, both of these modes, the missile flies to a GPS point. Mode one, it is supposed to fly towards the GPS point and automatically walk onto a target, just like mode zero and it would turn into a fire and forget missile. However, it is broken. It is not working correctly right now. If I were to go launch my ship, launch a missile from my ship at the GPS point at the target, it will just smack into the target and do nothing. Like it's not even there because it did not lock onto it. What that is supposed to be for is, say you got a target flying around out there, and I believe some radar mods can get you GPS coordinates. You could take those GPS coordinates and launch a missile in that general direction, and the missile would automatically lock onto it. 
for whatever reason, it's not working. I literally, I just tried it right before I started recording. Mode four is the same thing, but it goes straight to that GPS point. And whatever it's near, the proximity fuses will detonate. Now, if you were to place a GPS co coordinate in open air, the missile would literally just fly back and forth, back and forth. It keeps trying to autocorrect to that GPS point. But in this case, I got a GPS point right in front of the wall. So it'll fly over there, and as soon as the proximity sensors detects that wall, it's going to detonate the warheads, which we will see that momentarily. Now, how does this work? You need a text panel on your ship and name it R underscore target. From there, you take your GPS coordinates and you put them in custom data. Now, if you bring up the, the guide, setup guide for easy LiDAR homing script, on how to use mode one to four, it'll say, put them in the title field. And the title field for uh, some of your new people, sorry, is this right here. If you put them in the title field, it, it will not work. It doesn't work correctly. And it took me the longest time to figure out why my GPS missiles would not work. It has to go into the custom data field. Now, let's test this out real quick. Now, once again, let's get a GPS, target, copy to clipboard, control panel, our target. Now watch. Remember, title field, that's wrong. But I'm gonna put them in the title field. When I launch this missile, watch what happens. It just flies off into affinity. Okay, proved me wrong. It does not fly off if we're in infinity. That's weird because every other missile I tried to launch, it did not work correctly. Okay, way to go. Uh, space engineers, you proved me wrong whenever I'm recording. You stay away from me. Okay, so I guess that did work. But let's take this out. Pick clipboard, control panel, or target, custom data. Put it in the custom data field, and we'll launch the next missile. Now, once again, this is mode one. As you've seen, that missile impacted on the wall and did not blow up. That's because it is not working correctly. That, I did prove, space engineers. It didn't do anything. Missed the warhead to not blow up. But number three is, is uh, for mode four. So aim randomly. Three. It turns. Kaboom. So mode four is working. Mode three is not. So once again, a text panel, right? A text panel on the ship named R underscore target. And I guess you could put them in a title field now. Every time I tried, it never worked. I've always had to put them in a custom data. So just to be on the safe side, put them in custom data. Let's just copy your GPS coordinates, paste them in there. From there, you, you just launch it mode colon three, or I'm sorry, mode colon one or mode colon four. Mode column one is not working. It is supposed to log onto a ship and you're supposed to hear the alert sound play, but it did not lock on. Only mode four worked, as evident by the giant gaping hole. Now, what is this good for? Um, well, I know there are some scripts out there where the LiDAR script can give you a GPS coordinate. So you can be, I don't know, aiming at an enemy base way up there on a the mountainside. 
and get the GPS coordinates from it. Um, you can have a GPS coordinate on the moon or something. Like, here, let me find it. Uh, da, 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 da. Here we go. Like this thing right here. This missile that I built, I have not published it on the workshop yet because I've been lazy. It uses the script, the Easy LiDAR homing script, and I got the text panels right on the missile. Um, or on this one anyways. For, well, I'll get on both. And what this one is for, what I built this for is you can have this here on the planet and say coordinates number one could be in outer space and the hydrogen will get this out of the atmosphere or you can put it on say the far side of the moon and this hydrogen stage will carry you to the far side of the moon and remember you're in space once you're moving in a straight line it's going to keep going as long as you don't hit something so this will keep drifting until it gets to the far side of the moon where number stage number two, which is the same thing, but now this acts as the launching ship. Stage number two will now engage. And the ions kick on, and this can actually double back. It'll literally try to go to the GPS coordinates. So this could be the missile. This could be the, the GPS target on the far side of the moon. And this will try to double back and impact the base on the far side of the moon. So you can build multi-stage missiles and launch them from the Earth to and have actual waypoints. The only thing is this is line of sight. It will not avoid um, collision. So if you're doing that, you may get unlucky and hit an asteroid. But you can have this fly from here to say the far side of the Martian planet and double back and hit a target on the far side of the planet from the Earth's surface. That's the cool thing about the GPS targets. Um, you can have, like I said, some radar scripts out there, a radar mark out there, I believe will give you GPS coordinates too. You can get a target on the radar and launch a missile at it from your ship without ever even having to see it just by using the GPS coordinates. Now, once again, because mode one is not working and the missile will not automatically lock onto a target, your target has to be stationary, such as a base or say a capital ship that isn't moving. But that's a cool part about this. And GPS ones are, are very simple. I mean, once you got your ship built, you got um, all you really need is your, your missile, whatever you want to do with it and your our target just put your gps coordinates in hit fire and boom away it goes it automatically tracks the gps point but once again remember it will not uh does not have collision avoidance so if your target is down in a valley and you launch it from here it will smack right into the ground just bear that in mind now this one i'm going to keep nice short and sweet since well, it didn't really require much. But next episode, it's going to be a little bit longer. And the reason being, I am going to go into these custom data configurations. And you can have this do all kinds of things. You can have your missile do whatever you want. Going back to this, this baby right here. Because this is a lot of hydrogen, three tanks, um, when stage two kicks in, if there's still still hydrogen on the left, this is going to be, you know, it's going to be blasting against this. It's going to be throwing it off course or whatnot. I have stage two set up to trigger a timer on this, which will just shut the hydrogen engines off. So what this custom data can do is you can have any block do anything you want but that's for another episode so ladies and gentlemen thank you for joining me for this short sweet uh, uh, GPS guided tutorial 
I will see you next time.